Look at one of the board members and find a way to get your book also. All right. Then I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, we have Cruise Planners, uh, Crew Creative, Home Smart with Nancy Lindsay Beekler, uh, Purgatory Wine Cellars, and Memory Lane, Highlands Ranch Community Association, the Highlands Ranch Mansion, the Highlands Ranch Cultural Affairs Association, and the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District. This month we'd like to give a special shout out to the uh, Scientific Facilities and Cultural District. Uh, we have received our annual grant. Uh, there's a picture of Paul on the right receiving the actual grant check uh, down from the Douglas County Commissioners as they uh, spread the money around to all of the nonprofits in the county that received uh, grants this year. Also, uh, please check us out online. We have a lot of our upcoming events, our photos, and our oral histories. And as I know many of you have been around for this year, it has been a different year, but it was also a different year than being the 40th anniversary year. We focused the entire year on Highlands Ranch. So a lot of our presentations have been recorded, so if you haven't seen them, there's a lot of them that are online. Uh, and we're trying to get the rest of them up online also. Uh, so they're available there. And then we're in our final uh, one of this special year. Uh, we're going to talk about the Highlands Ranch Community Association and the Highlands Ranch Metro District. Next month is our annual meeting. And the annual meeting is coming up on December 8th. It'll be a Zoom meeting. It'll start at 6 o'clock. It is four members. And we're going to reflect on Highlands Ranch 40th year in the presentations that we've done. This is also the 30th year of the Highlands Ranch Historical Society. And we're looking forward to all the programs and initiatives uh, that are going to come up in 2022. And speaking of 2022, Sneak peek, of the, sneak peek of the first three. Uh, we're going to do the history of Anne Frank, uh, of Anne Frank's diary, fame, fame or infamy, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, uh, and her family presentation. Uh, this is from a friend of her father's, and he was a family friend of 20 years. Also, in February, we have one at Norman Rockwell. And this is presented by one of Norman Rockwell's neighbors, and, and he was a friend of Norman Rockwell's. And then finally in March, uh, the legendary ladies of the West are going to be coming out for us. So that's the beginning of our uh, next year. And next, we're going to start with our presentation. So we're going to start with video. And then I'll give an introduction to our first speaker, but let's start with the video here first. Why do people settle down in Highlands Ranch? Our community is, and always has been, built upon support, prosperity, and the pursuit of an enriched, beautiful lifestyle filled with opportunities. As neighbors, we support each other. As friends, we celebrate each other. The Highlands Ranch Community Association loves to create an environment where everyone can live life to the fullest, as we have for the past four decades. As we celebrate our 40th anniversary, we are celebrating all that we have accomplished, and we turn our sights to the next 40 years. When I first started here at Highlands Ranch, I believe the tenant program probably had two dozen kids in it and maybe a couple of dozen adults. Over the years, we've grown to be probably the largest USDA program provider in all of Colorado. The next 40 years, I believe we will do more and bring our community and our tennis players together. I'm looking forward to programming in which adults and kids are at the same time. What we put into these recreation centers and the renovations that come about, we're always trying something new. It is definitely a place that we try and make as inviting as possible for everybody in the community to come to. We have all played an important role in the success of Highlands Ranch. Alongside the HRCA, Douglas County, and Highlands Ranch Metro District, we believed in a strong partnership that built the foundation of Highlands Ranch. Our first 
community partners including Littleton Adventist Hospital and Nicolo's Pizza, a family-owned business, invested in us to create programs and events that enrich the lives of our residents and helped our economy thrive. So we became one of the first sponsors in Highlands Ranch and we truly appreciate the role we play with our community. We believe that being part of the Highlands Ranch Community Association has been really important. It's helped us keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening with the health of our community. It's a way for us to show that we care about the community and their life outside of healthcare and so that they are a good connection with one another. We partner with HRCA because overall I just love what they have to offer. I love what they offer our community and the fun events they plan and I've just seen so much community support with our schools and churches and friends and neighbors and it's meant everything to my family personally and to our business and I'm just so appreciative. Highlands Ranch was designated as a place of great innovation and built to accommodate everyone. From our oldest original residents to our youngest children, we are generations creating a lifestyle together and making Highlands Ranch our home. Celebrating our rich history of growth keeps us together and guides us into the future as we continue to grow and flourish. I see our future is very important. Everything that we have done and accomplished has not been a reason to rely on. We will continue to grow. We have seen Highlands Ranch and Milton Evans Hospital flourish together over the last 40 years. And we want to continue to see that. And we have a lot of work to continue to do in how we care for one another. The future of Highlands Ranch is strong. And this year, we invite you to celebrate and honor the last 40 years with us as we look forward to the next chapter of our story. Next, I'd like to welcome up Terry Flannery. Jerry, Jerry Flannery joined the HRCA in 2011 as general manager and CEO. He has empowered the organization to increase the quality of life in Highlands Ranch through the management of its open spaces, recreational facilities, and events, earning Highlands Ranch a national rankings as one of the best places to live in the country. The Highlands Ranch Community Association is a nationally award-winning nonprofit organization with a population of over 100,000. The HRCA provides thousands of fitness, recreation, and educational programs at all of its four state of the art recreation facilities. The HRCA keeps uh, property values high through the architectural control and manages 8,200 acres of the backcountry wilderness area and hosts over 100 community events per year. Jerry has broadened the HRCA profile in the region by building foundational relationships with sister organizations. Jerry comes to the HRCA bringing a wealth of talent and experience from his previous role as city manager of Number City. As city manager, he managed a budget of over $50 million and coordinated all municipal operations. He was instrumental in advancing Commerce City's economic development and successfully guided the city through the economic downturn without having to lay off staff or reduce the level of service to the citizens. He implemented a web-based customer relations management system that allowed residents to ask and get answers directly from city staff. Prior to his role at Commerce City, Flannery served as deputy county manager in Conoceo County, Arizona. In that role, he acted as the designated public lobbyist, while he oversaw departments representing nearly 45 million of the county's 144 million dollar budget. Mr. Flannery has served on the board of the Metro North Chamber of Commerce, the Denver Sports Commission, the Metro Economic, Den Metro Denver Economic Council. He's also been active in the professional organizations such as the Colorado Municipal League, the Colorado City and County Management Association, and the Adams County Mayor and Managers Group. Thank you, Gary. Yes, can you hear me with Chris? No, do I need this? So I don't need this thing. Okay. That, that one's for the uh, recording. Oh, okay. I guess I'll leave it on. Alright, so... Oops. I already messed it up. How do you expand this? Uh, I think it's expanded up there. You're just going to use the get down arrows here. Can I see it better? 
Uh, yeah, we don't change the settings, so let's do okay, I'll just turn on the lights. I'll just turn here. Okay, before, before we get started, <clears throat> you may have seen in the back where Jamie is and Sherry the uh, events of what's happened in the 40 years that we've been here in Highlands Ranch. And uh, feel free to go take a look at that. But she's also got some uh, games back there that are really full of fun facts. So, all right. This is the original uh, development plan for Highlands Ranch. It also includes the backcountry. And we'll get to that in a little bit, but it's uh, 8,000 acres or so of pristine uh, preserved land. And um, then you can see the other areas of the Highlands Ranch there. As I mentioned, there's some significant uh, milestones within our history. Uh, not to say the lease was 2011 when I came here. I didn't see that on there, Jamie. <laughs> we are a master plan community founded in uh, 1981 by Michigan Diego. And we were purchased by Shea Homes in 1997. 22,000 acre master plan community. It's unincorporated. So we're not a city. Even though my background is in urban uh, in city and county government, this is not an incorporated uh, community and it was designed that way on purpose. Uh, it was designed for single family, uh, townhomes, apartments, rec centers, parks and open space, business parks, and shopping centers. Mission Diego plan for our community governments involves the three entities, the Metro Districts, the Homeless Association, and Douglas County. Probably a reason we'll never incorporate is, is because it's another layer of taxes anyway, and we already get great services from the county. And Metro District and HRC. What is the Homeless Association? A structure to help maintain clean and cohesive atmosphere in the neighborhood. The purpose of a home association is to provide a common basis for preserving and maintaining and enhancing their homes and property values. The HRCA is the master association. In Highlands Ranch, we have 37 sub-associations. So those have their own board of directors and their own enforcement and those types of things that really go along with it. All homeowners are members. Uh, the HRCA and are required by the community declaration to pay the assessments, and that's part of the contract when you purchase a home in Highlands Ranch. Uh, where does the assessment money go? Architectural governing control that keeps the property values up, uh, operating and maintaining the HRCA facilities as you see here, and also improving them as you see uh, as we go along in this pre uh, presentation. It's to enhance the quality of life. Provides community events, programs, and amenities. As, as mentioned in the um, introduction, 100 events a year that we have. Until we talk again. Oh. Ensure the attractiveness of the neighborhoods and the community. Increase value of homes consistently ranked in the top places to live in the United States. Enhancing property values and creating quality of life and recreation, uh, recreation community events and leadership. I think that picture on the left looks like Tom Selleck from the 70s or something like <laughs> that. HRCA is a 501c4 nonprofit. Uh, social welfare organization described by the Internal Revenue Service to be operated exclusively to promote the common good and general welfare of the community. We have five members on our board of directors. We have 102 delegate districts. We don't necessarily have 102 delegates. The delegates elect the board of directors. Um, and the, the delegates, they vote on the budget and review all the recs and recs and improvements and that type of thing. There's, we have over 750 volunteers annually. I think that number's higher, isn't it, Jamie? It is. Yeah. Um, staff, we have 987 staff on payroll. That includes full-time and part-time. We're about 110 full-time. 1981, our population was 2,500. Built, we built North Ridge at that time, and you can see it, uh, that was in a previous picture as well, you can see it going up there. The evolution of our great community. 1997, population was 4,600. 
and then we build we build East Ridge, and that's where the administration offices are where I work from. Nineteen ninety-seven, West Ridge Pool opened. Two thousand one, West Ridge Rec Centers opens population seventy thousand. So look at that. Ninety-seven, forty-six hundred. Two thousand one, seventy thousand. Highlands Ranch 20th anniversary was that year. 2004 and 5, the population is now 86,000. Shea builds the town center, and that's where we have a lot of our community events. 2005, South Ridge Rec Center was built, where we're at today. 2006, Shea conveys 874 acres of the backcountry wilderness area for the first of HRCA's trails and hiking and biking. 2009, Shea conveys the remainder 8,200 acres of the backcountry wilderness area. That is where we have what we call base camp, where we have horseback riding, we have camping, we have um, just outdoor activities for kids, birthday parties, all kinds of things. If you haven't been out there, I highly encourage you to go. Facility management, we have 35 acres of recreational property, four facilities, and you know we like to think of the backcountry almost like a fifth rec center because it really is treated as such. Open 17 hours a day, seven days a week, 361 days a year. 5,000 daily visits by our members and uh, maybe their guests. We have uh, customer service and in all of our facilities, membership services. Registration, maintenance, and janitorial. Five basic programs that we provide classes for aquatics, arts education, backcountry wilderness area, community events, sports, fitness, and therapeutic recreation. This is our 40th anniversary year. Development around the mansion. You can see the mansion on the left. I don't know what, what year was that, Jamie? Early. <laughs> and then you see the development. How quick is 77? 76. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. And then the homes on the right, you can see that. Incredible. 40th anniversary uh, also shows Northridge. That was Northridge on the left. Now it's Northridge on the right. First homeowners, the Scott family. I don't think I've ever met them. But that's their house today, or maybe something else. Ridge Glen Way, looking southeast, then and now. Hines Ranch Park and University Boulevard, looking west, now Trisoma Development. <laughs> Crazy. HRCA continues to bring first class events, programs, and services to the HRCA community. Lots of stuff there. Lots of kids that we serve, lots of members that we serve. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> questions now or questions later? Questions now or questions later? Now. Okay. <laughs> you don't have any questions at this point? Yes, As the population <laughs> continues to mature, because we are a mature neighborhood, what are uh, what are HRCA's plans to kind of keep up with the fact that the demographics are changing? It's a good question, and um, you know, I think I think it's a good question for the Metro District as well, because they're talking about a senior center. Um, we actually do provide numerous uh, classes. I, I kind of look at our rec centers as they could be senior centers, each one of them because it's open to every population. We offer specific classes for seniors, and then if you walk out this door to the room right behind us, we have that kind of reserve for the seniors, the like seniors group, that they do a lot of that, their activities out of there. Where do you make more pickleball? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that is a popular sport, very popular, and I know the Metro District has, has built some outdoor ones. Um, we have a board member who's very interested in, in looking at some outdoor ones as well. Uh, we do have, I think, Northridge and Southridge both have reserved areas for pickleball. 
I thought it was only Jake's Park that had Oh no, it's, it's, yeah, we have, we have them here. Yeah, you, know, you, you can catch it in the middle of the day a lot of times because it's not, usually it's not an activity fill day because kids are in school, so a lot of the seniors come out and do pickleball. Yes, ma'am. As the homes are aging now, since they're 40 years old or so, are you having any more covenant violations or problems with weeds and, and paint and, you know, places that are not being maintained? And if so, what are you doing about it? That is an ongoing, 40 years worth of ongoing activity on that one. As I as mentioned, the dues that were paid go to uh, pay staff to go out and do those patrolling. And if you live in Highlands Ranch, chances are you receive the notice of some kind. Um, but if you go to some areas, the, the older subdivisions in Highlands Ranch, they might be close to 40 years old, but they don't look 40 years old because of those covenant enforcements. And we, we're very proud of that. It's a challenge because you get the yin and the yang. The people who hate it and say we're doing it too, too much and they want to take us to court. The other one's saying we're not doing enough and we're not catching it enough. So we're constantly doing that. We're looking at the staffing. We, we, uh, We've hired more inspectors so they, they can they can do more of those community patrols and, and find those citations. But they issued over thirty thousand notices last year. Yes, sir. I think the current population is about thirty six thousand. Well, I don't know, has the census numbers come out yet? No. I would guess it was I would my guess would be well over a hundred thousand. I'd say hundred and five, hundred and seven, that's what I would say. But I guess we'll have to wait to see what the official numbers are. Anyone else? Thought I saw him, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm just probably not illegal, but is there any regulation? We live across from a home that has been vacant for four years since we've lived here. Um, the grass obviously goes haywire, the sidewalks go and shelf back, the spray system in the lot, the trees and cracks. Water all over the place. There's nothing that says you have to occupy the home you all Correct, but I would I would probably guess that that is on our radar. Oh, uh, I'm sure your neighbors or somebody has pointed it out if our patrol or our uh, covenant people haven't seen it yet. But um, it's been four years. Yeah, and sometimes the problem sometimes with that is a bank owns it. And when a bank owns it, you can almost do hardly anything to it. Because um, usually you go to foreclose on somebody, that causes them to fix whatever the problems are. But when a bank owns it, it's, 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 they're going to hold the note, so you're not, it's, it's got to go unchallenged sometimes. But it could be in a court, court system as well. I told a small white lot, they stop by twice a year. I <laughs> oh, that's it. Wow. So it's not, they, the bank doesn't own they don't. Well, if you want to write down my address, and I'll take that with me when I leave tonight. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, since the pandemic, I have noticed an increase in trash throughout Highlands Ranch. It may be a problem that you don't have enough workers, but is there anything you can do to try to get back to keeping it more pristine? I've only been here six years, and it was very pristine. Not so much anymore. Well, we do not actually operate a waste uh, management company. It's it's contracting they, they, it's contracted with the home so um sometimes they don't require um lids on things and that causes the trash to blow up we're talking about highland ranch parkway up and down the parkway well that's uh, not in our jurisdictions jerry if you don't mind let yes. me take a crack at this a great question ma'am so i'm my job with the metro district is so that what we try to do is about education number one um, a big piece of what uh, Sherry Eppers and Community Relations does, as well as our Parks Rec and Open Space, is they coordinate volunteer cleanups. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, Sherry, how many do we do? Over half a dozen a year? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so we have a, a pretty robust uh, group of volunteers. Um, we've looked at to you know, adopt the roadway, adopt the parkway, those kind of things. Uh, that's what I think is going to really address that problem. So you're looking to address it in the future as opposed to tomorrow? Well, so we've we've been doing we've been doing a lot of volunteer cleanup activities. Um, we likely need to do more of those. Um, we need to uh, coordinate and organize some more of those kind of activities. But I just yeah, I commend Sherry her her, her office and our parks rack and open space, uh, trying to again educate the public and, uh, and organize those uh, volunteer cleanup events. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am
Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. You didn't mention her, but Jody does an excellent job with the program she puts on. Oh yes. Oh, we have we have excellent staff. In that almost thousand member staff, we have some of the greatest staff I've ever had the pleasure of working with. So yes. Okay. Whoops. Jamie told me not to do that. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, next, I uh, would like to welcome Mike Renshaw. He has more than 28 years of experience in local government, leadership, and management. Prior to becoming the general manager of Highland Ranch Metro District in January 2021, he served as the county manager in Barbara County, Georgia, and Camden, Georgia, North Carolina, for a combined 12 years. Mike began his local government career as a police officer with the city of Glendale, Arizona, where he served for nine years. A proud veteran of the United States Navy for the first Gulf War, Mike returned to school following his honorable discharge and completed his Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice and his Master of Public Administration at the University at the Arizona State University. Thank you, David. Good evening, everyone. It's truly an honor uh, to be here part of this program tonight. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you all so much for coming out. Definitely know it's not easy coming out at 7 o'clock on Monday, uh, so thank you all so much for being here with us. Over the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to be your guide, and we're going to take a, a whirlwind tour of the past 40 years of a historical photographic tour of Highlands Ranch. Let's make sure that I have this. Jerry's always a tough act to follow, but I'm going to do my best. Thank you for the house lights and so uh, Full disclosure, since I've only been the general manager now for about 11 months, as you can imagine, I'm a little bit history, historically challenged. So I want to, right off the bat, uh, thank a couple of few staff members from the Metro District. Uh, Sherry Evers, our community relations manager, extraordinary. Uh, Jeff Case, our public works director, who some of you probably worked with, which Jeff has been here over 30 years. And also our uh, finance director, Stephanie Stanley, they really helped me kind of add some actors and some insights to the presentation. So what I'd like to do, Jerry showed some really interesting photos as well, but I'm going to start with this one. And what I'm going to do first is kind of point out, I think this is interesting, but basically this is a, uh, this photo shows Mission Vino Executive from Mr. Phil Wiley and Steve Ormiston. Uh, with plans, the original set of plans I think for Highlands Ranch. As you all know, Mission Viejo Company purchased land from Marvin Davis. Marvin Davis, I'm told, was uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, independent uh, oil uh, men in the country at the time. Purchased the land uh, back in the late to mid 70s. The development plan was approved by Douglas County Commissioners, not without some controversy, and not without some challenge. There were some concerns and issues. And uh, the plan was originally to build a community of about 95,000 to 100,000, as Jerry mentioned. Uh, we're about 98% built out, and we're pushing that 100, 105,000 threshold. So we're right at that. Here's what I want to do, because I think this is pretty, pretty interesting. How much land originally? 22,000 acres was the original purchase, the parcel that was purchased. Check this out here. You can tell you're looking at it. That, that, not to mention the dress right in the airstones, but you can tell you're looking at a photograph it's in the mid 70s to early 80s because that's actually an ashtray with some harsh fixed in your seats. <laughs> so we spoke in the office. I thought that was when I saw it. Is that really an ashtray? <laughs> so here's another. This is actually the mansion in the Solera for those of you who have been over there. And this uh, photo shows Mr. Jim Tepper, who was then president of the Mission Diego, Colorado. Uh, presenting the Highlands Ranch project and the, um, the, the designs and whatnot to the Douglas County Planning Commission. And uh, as I mentioned, this was in the small area of the, uh, of the mansion. And again, I love the, uh, the clothing and the hairstyles, and, and there's some miscellaneous sort of extras scattered throughout. Everybody, I'm sure, has heard of the five P's, right? Proper planning permits, poor performance. Really, the, the cornerstone of my presentation is going to be about just that. And that's how Highlands Ranch got it right, I believe. Uh, about four years ago, our planning or our public works director, Jeff Case, who I mentioned, uh, gave a presentation to the uh, American Planning Association out of Bay. And uh, the title of the, uh, of the presentation was, What if Highlands Ranch got it right? And I think Highlands Ranch got it right. Again, it's that 
Proper planning, which prevents poor performance, which is really the highlight of my presentation. So I think you've seen this photo. Um, this is uh, an expansive photo, for sure, which shows that the land that is now Highland Ranch, and we're looking west, obviously, to the mountains. You'll see the mansion and the ranch property in the center of the photo, surrounded by nothing but open pasture. I wanted to mention that uh, the first school was built at Highlands Ranch way back in 1982. That was Northridge Elementary. My gosh, I was a junior in high school at that time. 1982, the first elementary school. This photo is a little bit uh, different perspective from the air, uh, but it, uh, this is from 1980, and it's looking north, obviously, from Highlands Ranch, kind of uh, over the top of the uh, the uh, mansion property is down in this corner here. This is Northridge under development, obviously the first phase of that proper plan. It was a phased approach. And it shows uh, obviously the city of Wilton and whatnot a little bit further to the north. I really love these. I, hopefully some of you have seen these. Some of you may have some copies of maybe the originals. But this I mentioned earlier at the top. You know, in the mid-70s, when this project was first talked about, it was not without controversy. And as you can see from these headlines, I love reading, but I wish they were a little bit easier to read. Douglas County official calls land project a worry. The state action urges, or state action is urged on Phipps Ranch. Uh, Littleton files suit uh, against Highlands Ranch. Uh, some water concerns, water right concerns, rightfully so. I mean, that's the limiting factor here in terms of development. But the point of this is that these headlines show you know, from that time frame, from the late 70s to the early 80s, there were a lot of some negativity and negative comments. Okay, this is from the 1977 Rocky Mountain News, who I'm told is no longer in circulation, but a great, uh, great uh, newspaper. Um, it basically shows the 22,000 acres uh, having been uh, transferred, and I've got some data here. I can flip to it. So $14 million uh, was the uh, sale price. I did a little calculation, let me check my math because I'm not sure I got this exactly right, but when you look at the, uh, the present value of money uh, and the change in value, 356% change in value from 1977 to today. So that $14 million land deal in today's dollars would be over $63 million. And at the time, it was one of the largest real estate transactions in Colorado City history, which I thought was pretty fascinating. Okay, so our plan community had borders, and again, I talked about the proper plan with managed growth, phased growth, and I think that's really, really key. And this is really important as well. System development fees, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. But the system development fees financed the cost of the infrastructure, the roads, right? The signalized intersections. The system development fees really set us apart. And that was the model that, uh, that the planners uh, with uh, Mission Diego used. It really allowed us to manage debt much more efficiently and effectively and basically have less debt service than a lot of similar community special districts. Some of you may have heard the name Bruce Lepsack. Uh, Bruce was the first finance director for the district and he worked with the team on multiple successive debt issuances over the years. The Lepsack Tennis Center, who many of you may have played at, is actually named after Bruce and it's over at Stone Park, obviously. Again, system development fees really set us apart. And when I mentioned earlier, um, you know, what if Highlands Ranch got it right? I think if you look at anything, those early planning years, how we utilize the system development fees. A lot of communities call them impact fees, but how we utilize and leverage the system development fees. Basically, what it means is that development pays its own cost for growth. Right? We're basically phasing in growth, and the, the, the entire burden is not being placed on the original homeowners, the original property owners. They do, and you know, obviously those fees are passed on to the home buyers. It's kind of part of that purchase price of the home. But the bottom line, and the important thing to take away from the system development fees, is it really alleviates a lot of the burden up front and kind of spreads that, uh, that growth pressure and the cost 
of medium and low pressure arrival. Okay, so the next eight slides, I think this is really cool. I think you're going to appreciate this. And I'm going to try to go through them relatively quickly to get the right effect. But it's kind of a time lapse uh, series of photographs that show the growth. And again, going back to the very early, the earliest days, 1980, right? Nothing there. The green is obviously the boundaries of Highlands Ranch. So here we go. And this will be in five year increments. And as I mentioned, Northridge, as many of you know, was the first kind of phase of the development. And you can see the, the streets in the neighborhood going in Northridge. Then when we fast forward to 1990, a little bit more in Northridge, we're seeing some development over on the east side of town, Eastridge. We're kind of spreading out into the central. 1995, wow, a lot of pickup and growth between 1990 and 1995. But again, you can see those uh, residential and a lot of the commercial. I know it's hard to see, but the rent tops are retail. And there's that legend up on top. But you can see a lot of the retail shopping coming in to meet again that residential growth. Fast forward to 2000, um, looking kind of like the community that we know of today, obviously, and it's still about 20 years ago. But again, you can see a lot more of that uh, retail coming in in the different nodes, you know, throughout the community. 2005, some additional growth. Obviously, uh, South Ridge started to grow in Iceland, and again, adding additional retail and commercial to meet that residential growth. And about 10 or 11 years ago, 2015, I think we're just about um, complete with the retail commercial. And last day, 16. So I thought that was kind of a really interesting kind of uh, portrayal or illustration of how the growth actually occurs. It started in the north, kind of spreading, sprawling a bit into the central and south, a little bit in the east. So I think you've seen this photo before. Um, I kind of showed a similar kind of vantage point of view looking to the west, obviously to the mountains, but now you can certainly see over the top of the mansion, right, the build out of Highlands Ranch. And uh, this is again looking west with the mansion and the ranch in the foreground, uh, but now with almost a fully developed community, uh, 40 years of uh, growth and development. Wanted to highlight, this is just a sampling. I think Jerry touched on some of these as well as some of the national awards. But let me just say this, you know, none of this is possible without these accolades, national accolades. None of this is possible without that collaboration and uh, partnership that Jerry mentioned. You know, whether it's between uh, the Community Association and the Metro District, Metro District Community Association and Douglas County. It's all about collaboration and partnership, and really I think that is the ingredient as well. In addition to proper planning, preventing that poor performance, it's really about the collaborative partnerships between the agencies that really made us successful. Anyway, best place to live in the nation, 2019. That's pretty cool. Uh, fastest growing community in the nation, 2017 and 2020. Top boom towns in America. Not sure exactly what the definition of boom town is, but it, it leads me to believe that growth, like right, fast growth, in most livable mid-sized cities in 2019. Uh, everybody probably recognizes this, um, our newest fire station. Uh, and again, just some of the amenities and the activities and the events and the programming. This is the kind of stuff, this family-oriented atmosphere uh, that drew myself and my family to Highlands Ranch, to be quite honest, um, having done research. You, know, you can see these things, and a lot of communities take a lot of pride in those accolades. But when you really dig down deep and look at the programming and the uh, kind of how, how bonded the, uh, the neighborhoods are and the residents are with the, uh, with the community, that's really important to me. And I know it's important to you all. I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to talk about the mission. Um, you know, most organizations have mission and value statements, but I think this is really important for, for the community to understand what the Metro District's mission is. We're committed to providing innovative, there's that word, innovative, I'm going to talk about that again in a second, and quality municipal services while managing the resources wisely for the community of Highlands Ranch. Our vision is to lead cooperative, again that's that collaborative, cooperative uh, kind of uh, concept. Cooperative efforts to ensure quality and responsive service and support to our community in the creation and management of parks and recreation, open space, Public works and cultural activities. And uh, our mission in 
vision is to ensure wise use of our resources by encouraging citizen involvement and interaction and public-private collaborations. This next slide is something that I'm really proud of and proud of our community relations department for kind of coming up with this. I really was looking for uh, something that kind of is a visual, that kind of shows our core values, our guiding principles. And uh, as you can see, there are five here. Again, that word innovative. Uh, responsive, respectful, collaborative, very important, and lastly, honest. I do all the onboarding for all the new employees that come into the Metro District. Right now, we've got a little less than 100 employees. Uh, we've got a lot more when you add in the, uh, the seasonal employees, but all the new employees that come on board, I have a chance to meet with. And I talk about these core values, core principles, guiding principles with them. And, uh, and again, none, is, none are more important than the others, but I really do think this innovative and collaborative. I think this is really the key. And again, whether it's collaborating between other agencies uh, within the community, uh, I've mentioned earlier the public-private partnerships that we're always looking to foster, and that's very important. Okay, um, a little bit of time lapse, photography, trickery again. I want to kind of show, most of you probably are aware of some of these parks. Um, this is kind of going to be a then and now, what the park looked like uh, back in the early years, 91. This is Plum Valley Park um, in Westridge. It's from the same vantage point. I, I love these photos when you go back and kind of try to capture the same vantage point because you can look at the trees, right? The saplings, just the young trees, as they were put in the 91, and then boom, fast forward to 2021, and you can kind of see the growth. Um, we typically try to, uh, we have playground replacements on a, on a cycle as part of our uh, capital improvement plan. So we typically try to replace those playgrounds and now that they're giving some age, uh, one every year or so. So that's part of our plan. And as many of you know, we have 26 parks scattered throughout the community. Okay, this is Marcy Park. Again, one of those time-lapse photography uh, photographs from 1999 and again in 2021, showing uh, kind of the um, these were taken out as 22 years apart, and uh, the photo on the left hand side shows that the Million Gazebo just under construction, obviously, and the same shelter with the mature trees that are now grown up around. There's so much to be proud of in Highland Drainage, the community. Um, just me being a new resident and, and, and coming to work, you know, this new position as general manager, I've seen it, I've sensed it, uh, the pride the community has. Uh, just in the 11 short months that I've been here. We certainly pride ourselves on a robust outdoor recreational system, all those opportunities and amenities, whether it's the uh, community association or the amenities that the Metro District provides. I mentioned earlier 26 parks within you know, the Metro District system, uh, more than 70 miles of trails that we maintain, and over 2,600 acres of open space. And again, the programs and the events provided in these facilities just create a wonderful, dynamic, robust, vibrant quality of life for the community, for the residents. We're really, my finance director wanted me to put this in. Uh, we're really, really proud of our strong financial condition. And these are just some illustrations of that. Uh, low property tax rate, 11.5. 205 mills. That really is pretty low. When you look at, I have another graphic I meant to bring. When you look at us, relatively speaking, with some of the other communities, larger communities, the cities, municipalities, that 11.205 is really very low. We're really, really proud of our double A plus bond rating. Took a lot of effort to get there. And it's again about um, sound financial policies and practices, and again, managing debt wisely. Uh, which is a good segue. Uh, proud, proud to say, I know the Metro District Board of Directors are very proud to say that we're about ready to retire the remaining debt. We're going to be debt free in the Metro District. So that's a huge accomplishment. And uh, that's going to be actually the first week in December when we pull the trigger and retire that uh, last remaining $19 million worth of debt. Um, we have several funds, a major repair fund being one of those. And again, I uh, talked earlier about proper planning. Um, you know, Mission Viejo, Shea Homes, and how they engage in proper planning to prevent poor performance. What we do as a metro district now, your local government, is to make sure that we have the funds available in planning for growth and for maintenance and repair and replacement of all of those amenities that we've come to enjoy 
uh, throughout the years. Really want to encourage you to uh, visit our, uh, our open budget. Really proud of this. I've done this in other communities, so I was really happy to see that uh, Metro District has been part of open budget. It's a really transparent portal to allow you to go in and really drill down to like line item by line item within the budget to see expenses and revenues, how we're spending our money from month to month. Literally, you can see it. Uh, we update it every month. Uh, and how revenues are coming. Okay, so I talked about, again, uh, the planning is involved in the infrastructure, and that was primary responsibility back in the early days of the Metro District. The Metro District took on that responsibility for constructing and, and installing the infrastructure. Be those arterial streets, or all the signalized intersections, or uh, very importantly, the stormwater BMPs and, and, and uh, management structures that we have throughout the community. And uh, obviously, we'll work with other partners. Uh, Mile High Flood District is a great partner of ours to share funding for a lot of the stormwater uh, BMPs and management structures throughout the community. More than $185 million over the years in basic infrastructure. Again, the roads, there are two other roads, uh, two fire stations, parks, the trails, the storm drainage, which I just mentioned, the traffic signals. Importantly, of that $185 million, 88% of that was paid for by developer fees. Again, the system development fees that I talked about early on. And 12%, the remaining 12% of the balance was paid through grants and some matching dollars from the county, from Douglas County, and again, the wildlife flood district. Really want to uh, give kudos to Centennial Water and Sanitation District. Um, our reliable water supply and low, low water and wastewater rates really help to drive, be the catalyst for growth in the community and support our community. And again, Centennial Water and Sanitation District, in my opinion, because I've managed some other utility, large utilities, Centennial has really done a wonderful job in securing and managing a really safe and reliable water portfolio. Uh, and some of you may know this, some of you may not, that water portfolio, and again, those water rights, our water portfolio, 80% of it, is, uh, is uh, composed of surface water, and that's really important. We have a very minor kind of reliance we need to, uh, to, to, to pump well water. So 80% is surface water. And this is really uh, was fascinating to me. Um, in 2002, some of you may remember the significant drought that we had in 2002, Centennial Water and Sanitation in the Metro District, you know, the partners, were the first large utility in the Denver metro area to have implemented water budgets unique to each individual parcel. And this reduced the average consumption of water by about 20%. So that's significant, and it's a good milestone uh, to be the first large utility in the Denver metro. And uh, I love this photo. Um, we do have some beautiful sunsets and sunrises now over here. <laughs> I really love this photo. This is uh, over at Chatfield Reservoir which uh, many of you know is now the community's largest storage reservoir. Okay, I'm going to go through uh, the next series of slides relatively quick because we're coming up on, I think, about 15 minutes. Nancy was supposed to give me the cutoff. Anyway, okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, Redstone Park, uh, built in 1999, enjoyed, as we all know, by thousands and thousands of park visitors each year, uh, mostly uh, Highlands Ranch visitors. But anyway, you can see a uh, 55 acre Redstone Park, um, the largest park in the Highlands Ranch system, is 26. Uh, opened up the opportunity for the Metro District to provide a really wide variety of outdoor recreation programs. Um, the park features the Atlanta Tennis Courts, which I mentioned previously, the Lesbian Tennis Center, uh, Atlanta Ball Fields, Batting Cages, Sports Fields, a pond, a playground, uh, there's a skate park over there, and some trails. Uh, to the lady that talked about pickleball, I'm gonna don't 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 I'm gonna remember to uh, touch on that, so don't let me forget uh, because pickleball is a huge. We do have four courts, not nearly enough over at Tanks Park, uh, but we're looking to expand that. Okay, the next milestone, uh, kind of along the way in our uh, in our growth and development, was Civic Green Park, uh, dedicated in 2005. Uh, Civic Green Park was built in phases, and the park first opened to the public again in 05. The top photo shows obviously the park under construction. 
Centenary Park in the town center area. This is looking northwest from behind the park's amphitheater. The next photo adjacent to it uh, shows Civic Grand Park premiere in 2005. And uh, Jerry and I, I had the opportunity back in August to do the uh, Summer Sunset concert. There was like, I don't know, 3,000 people. There was a lot of people. Um, Jerry and I got a chance to kind of open an MC for that. Um, and that was my first opportunity to see so many people on the lawn. What a great, great facility that is. Okay, the next milestone, uh, we're really proud of this one. What a jewel, uh, the historic uh, Highlands Ranch Mansion. Shea Homes conveyed the Highlands Ranch Mansion to the Metro District, which some of you may know about 11 years ago, back in 2010. This photo shows that conveying ceremony, which is awesome. Is this Mr. Teffer? Does anyone know? I think it is. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Teffer yet, but it looks like it. Uh, anyway, it shows the uh, conveyance ceremony, ceremony at the front door of the mansion. Um, and as many of you know, from 2010 to 2012, the mansion uh, underwent a major renovation and opened to the public uh, ultimately in 2012. And it's been an operation, it is a, uh, just a fantastic uh, event venue ever since. And uh, the staff over there, uh, Harlan, uh, everybody does a great, great job with that. So if you haven't been over to the mansion, certainly uh, put that on your calendar and do so. Okay, I think this is one of the last kind of major milestones. We're getting to a Central Park, the most recent uh, park to open. It was dedicated in 2019, so just a couple of years ago. And it was really a collaboration, and that word collaboration, collaborative. Uh, among the Metro District, Shea Homes, Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and Douglas County. And you can see representatives, I think that's uh, Director Worley right there. This is a gentleman from Mark uh, Shea, likely. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Board of County Commissioner Laura Thomas, and Tony Sproul, I'm sure. Um, representatives of each of these organizations are shown in this photo, officially cutting that ribbon as a great facility as well, and the newest in the park system. Okay, so um, I want to talk a little bit about the future. Again, um, 40th uh, anniversary, happy birthday, Adam's Ranch. Um, folks, we're just getting started. I want to talk a little bit about some of the kind of mod, uh, keystone projects that we have coming up in terms of the future. I'm going to kind of close my presentation on this. Um, Jerry talked a little bit about the uh, Highlands Ranch Senior Center. It's a project that uh, has been being discussed for the past four or five years, at least. Uh, we're currently under uh, engineering design and site development, um, and we're hoping to cut the ribbon on that at uh, the end of the fourth quarter 2023. It's going to be about a 20,000 square foot facility, about $12.5 million, and I think it's going to be a much utilized, heavily utilized amenity in the community. Because as you know, uh, myself included, I'm getting into that, that demographic, that age category, uh, the community's aging. And uh, we need those amenities and those assets to, uh, to meet that, that uh, changing demographic. The second one, the Highlands Ranch Community Historic Park, that's really exciting to me. It's basically uh, 250 acres, plus or minus, um, kind of south of the mansion. But uh, it, it, many of you know, many of you know more than, about this than I do, we have kind of an active cattle ranch operation years ago. And there's still some cattle that are brought onto it. Um, what we're going to be doing in 2023 in the Metro District is beginning that planning process. And proper planning is going to prevent poor performance and allow us to really uh, leverage and utilize those 250 acres. Um, we're still kind of envisioning, or envisioning, I should say, and we're going to be gathering some public comment about how best to use and develop those 250 acres and all of those uh, really historic uh, buildings, the silos. We're replacing the roof on the silos as we speak, the three silos. Um, but just some really jewels and tremendous assets, historically speaking, right? The buildings around there. Um, and if you know uh, the Littleton uh, Living Museum, perhaps that's one kind of, you know, where we have school children kind of come through and kind of learn about the history of the area. That might be a possible uh, kind of a model that we use a living museum. But we're really excited about that. So 2023, just a couple of years off, we start the planning process. And in 2026, Shea Holmes is going to convey or transfer those 250 acres to the Metro District, similar to what they did uh, with the mansion itself. Um, I mentioned again our major repair fund, our capital improvement fund, those are two major funds to make sure that we, as a staff, working with the elected body, the Metro District Board of Directors, have the resources 
reserves available to meet those growing demands, adding new amenities and new facilities, but equally importantly, maintaining, repairing, replacing uh, the aging infrastructure that we currently have. And again, um, talked about the public private partnership opportunities that I'm, I'm a big advocate of looking for opportunities to leverage private resources as well. Okay, and uh, this is from the community relations folks. We're going to encourage you to really uh, do a great job, I think, over the years, um, kind of enhancing, redesigning our website, metric district website. If you haven't visited it in a while, please do so. That was ranch.org. Um, and also, uh, really done a great job enhancing, I think, our social media presence. As you all know, all of those different things Facebook, Nextdoor, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram all very, very important for us to market our brand and get our image out to the community and to uh, communicate information. Any questions? Yes, sir. In the maps, I saw that Dad Park Drive was there when they uh, North Ridge. Who in the world was Dad Park? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to Does anyone in the hall share? Share in the back. So Dad Park was a potato farmer in this area back I believe in the 1800s. Awesome. There's not a lot of information about him, but we know that he was a potato farmer. <laughs> I, I actually wondered that myself. I never, like, <laughs> embarrassing, I never I, I asked the question. Thank you, sir. His first name was Rufus. But <laughs> Rufus. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Do uh, you have a slide on Plum Valley Park in the playground? Yes, ma'am. Um, when is that playground going to open? Um, the newsletter said October, but I drove past it yesterday and it still has a chain link fence around it. Yeah, we're still uh, a uh, staff deconstructed. Chair, do you have a recent update on that? I do, actually. There were some delays, as you know, all the supply chain issues, and then contractors had some issues and pushed it back a little bit. I believe it could open as early as. Thank you. Uh, I believe it could open as early as this week. I live over in that area too, so keep an eye out. It it should open soon. Just wait. So uh, the uh, location that was ultimately identified and selected back in February of this year, Highlands Ranch Parkway, just east of Broadway. So if you're familiar with, uh, as you come off of 470 on Broadway, you cross over Plaza Drive. You know, if you're familiar with the Safeway Shopping Center, that's right at the corner of Highlands Ranch Parkway and Broadway. It's just uh, just east of that intersection. Uh, there's a Mountain View Community Church. And there's a utility building right next door. That's the site. The, uh, the district owns about five and a half acres, and that's that's the site that was identified. Seems like it's up a hill. It is. It, it's a topographically interesting parcel. Uh, but uh, here's what I can share with the group, um, and I'm really happy to do this with the GM because I have a hard cap on the budget. I mentioned that's all and a half million dollars. What I'm being told now, and we're working with the site civil engineer, is that it's a balanced site. What that means is that as unusual and sloped as that property looks, the way that we're going to configure that 20,000 square foot building onto the site, we're going to be able to take dirt from one end of the site where there's low spots and move it to, to fill those. So it's balanced. We're not going to have to import a lot of dirt to the site. And that saves a lot of cost and that's important. Uh, yes, sir. Will there be a traffic light? Yeah. Or, or that, that was that came, we, did, we did three public comment periods, um, and, and that was a huge concern and a huge issue, and it is my concern as well. We're currently discussing with the county. Uh, Douglas County is also looking to have kind of a small satellite human services office, just about 1,500 square feet, uh, in addition to the 20,000 uh, senior center space. Uh, so it's, that's not going to generate a lot of vehicle traffic, uh, however, um, we're, we're discussing and negotiating with the county right now to share the cost or have the cost of signalizing that intersection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you tell us any updated plans on the light rails approaching to Highlands Ranch? Is that still on track? <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I'm going to say, based on my 11 month experience, here's what I will say. Cover my bases. Sherry might have some additional information. Uh, Director Tis Tisdale, 
with RTD is going to actually come and do a presentation uh, in our next board meeting, November 30th. I can say this: I don't, I don't, I haven't seen uh, some recent updated plans. I think it's if it still is in the books, it's, it's so far off. Uh, but uh, that may be a great question. I'll make sure that I write that down to ask Mr. Tisdale. And uh, if you're able to, it's, it'll be zoomed, you know, our November 30th meeting. So if you're able to, to tune in and, and listen to Director Tisdale, um, I think that that will be a question that somebody asks. Richard. Sure. Yes, sir. That's a great question. So uh, the Metro District constructed and then we deeded over and conveyed the streets to Douglas County. So now Douglas County is responsible for the maintenance of the major arterials. If I understand. So the major roadways, the arterials, are, are, count, are were, were transferred over to county ownership. So they're responsible now for maintaining and, uh, and upgrading those. And there's some subdivisions uh, so that's uh, Jerry. Are there any uh, sub associations that uh, have the private streets yes. where they're responsible? The sub associations involved with the mayors? Yes, the yes. backcountry is that. Uh, okay, right. Perfect example backcountry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you mentioned the mill levy being related to the low. Um, is that Thank you for that. And uh, I do have a graphic, and I think in the messenger, many of you see that messenger that comes out. I think that uh, Sherry in the finance office sometimes posts that that graphic that kind of shows, comparatively speaking, it's all relative. But yeah, when you look, like Nancy said, when you look across the region, we are among the lowest in terms of that, that property. We're lean and mean, I'd like to say. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of staffing, uh, but uh, they, they, they manage their resources wisely and we're able to leverage. Uh, through a lot of different things, use of technology is a big one nowadays. But to, to make to, to work uh, smarter, not harder, I like to say. But thank you for that answer. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Earlier this year, I got a communication about something uh, near the Tepfer Park, the Park. There's a pot of land there that was going to be developed, and there was some a plan to take that away from the development and incorporate that into the HRCA or the Metro District or something. I, I hadn't heard anything more about that, but I wonder if you have any information about I can, that. I can give a brief one. Did everybody hear the question in regards to Temple Park? Uh, so the gentleman uh, asked uh, for any updates regarding uh, Temple Park. There's about 10 acres uh, that uh, years and years ago, again, that proper planning, um, being a master plan, plan unit development community, uh, the developer designated areas within the community for the construction of schools, uh, high schools, elementary schools, whatnot. Uh, so the school district basically, um, you know, they do their planning as well and decide or determine need or not for future school sites. So they have this inventory of uh, planned future school sites. Tepper Park, the 10 or so acres um, adjacent to an existing metro district park where we have some park amenities laying around in the restroom facility, a sports field. Uh, but there was an undeveloped, kind of vacant 10-acre parcel that the school district uh, a year and a half or so ago decided they did not need for a future school site. So they kind of explored, you know, rightfully so, you know, it's, it's worth, it's value. Um, I can share this with you. Um, we, uh, we, we have spoken with uh, the, the county folks and the county folks are now negotiating with the school district folks with the Board of Education about the uh, transfer uh, sale of that site uh, from the school district to the county and the county's intentions, I believe, once that sale, once the negotiations are finalized, uh, the county's intentions would be to convey 
that 10 acres over to the metro district because we've kind of committed and obligated ourselves to expand the, uh, the park amenities, uh, new playground set, new playground amenities, uh, new ball fields. Uh, expanded parking. If, you have, if any of you have been over there, the parking is not the best. You tell the parks to enhance and expand the parking. So, uh, so that uh, there's some recent uh, articles in the one in the newspaper in the Times Herald. Yeah, there's still negotiations, so I can't talk too much about that. It's kind of an issue or a matter between Douglas County at this stage and the school district. But uh, I'm uh, cautious. I'm, I'm not, not even cautious. I'm optimistic. We're going to use the possible news in the next couple couple of months. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Just something I'm curious about. It looks like you may be in the process of replacing some of the road signs on the arterial roads because I've noticed some of the newer signs. Um, the symbol on it is clearly a bird of prey. I'm not sure if it's a hawk, a falcon, or an eagle, but it's a bird of prey. <laughs> and the older signs, some of which are getting kind of faded. When I first moved out here several years ago, I couldn't figure out what that critter was. It just and it was on several of your slides, and it's just the drawing is just it's, you can't really figure out what kind of animal it is. Sure. Do you want to talk a little bit about sure. that? Sure. That's a great question. Yeah. Several years ago, and Jamie and I got to work with other, um, you know others involved in the community we worked with a, a basically a marketing firm and cleaned up that logo because it looked we joked that it looked like an ink blot workshop test yeah and it was really hard because the running chicken the dinosaur all kinds of things came up so it was cleaned up it was kind of taken out of its box and so you'll see on the signs or you're afraid of the signs that are along c470 well, well, you and know, the community does. Like road signs like on Highlands Ranch Parkway, University, Broadway, you know, those yeah. that are the electric signal. Yeah, yeah the, that's a, the new updated refreshed logo on all of those. Yeah, so. Is really bad. There's been a big emphasis on the, uh, they call them the illuminated signage. Yes. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's, we're replacing the old, tattered, broken, kind of faded uh, with the new. We're kind of incorporating that new logo with design. And it's an eagle. So, okay. it's an eagle, it's official. Yeah. Sure, it's a, so. not a problem. Can I just give the um, historical aspect of that bird? It was created by the marketing um, uh, company that was hired by Mission Viejo, and they decided they were trying to find a logo for Highlands Ranch, and it's a cow ranch. Mm -hmm. So, they were thinking, should it be a cow? And then they thought, well, no, that doesn't sound dynamic enough. <laughs> so they came up with a combination eagle, owl, um, falcon, all the different types of birds of prey, and they called it the epic bird. So if you go onto our website, we have a whole little snippet, a whole little article that talks about the epic bird. So I actually like seeing the old one because it's, it's the epic bird, and now we have a new eagle. <laughs> Thanks for that, yes. <laughs> Any other questions? You the pickle. Oh, <laughs> thank you for the <laughs> So, just a huge, huge uh, groundswell of uh, public opinion about the fact that we need more than four. <laughs> Obviously, the sport is just taking off in popularity. Um, so, what we're planning on doing now, it's been, it was discussed last year as we were preparing the 2021 budget. Uh, the uh, board of directors have, uh, have kind of carved out, set aside, identified is the right finance term, about two and a half million dollars. What we're doing right now is uh, doing some site evaluations. We need about five or so acres. So we're looking at some different options. Um, what would be best suited for what we're hoping to build with that two and a half million dollars is a uh, tournament grade, tournament level pickleball complex facility with about 10 to 12 courts, you know, lighting courts, um, a lot of the bells and whistles that a lot of the larger tournaments need. Because we recognize, and the board of directors recognize that, uh, again, that the, the sport, the popularity of the sport is just taking off. And it's enjoyed by all ages. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about the new uh, apartment building over in uh, Civic Center. Mm -hmm. Is that do I understand that Shay is taking the bottom of that parking lot by the police station 
and using that exclusively for their attendance in that building? I don't, uh, honestly, I don't have a, a good answer. Sherry, have you heard that? I, I can certainly follow up. With it. Well, that's what the uh, people who are running over there, okay. all, that's what they're telling the okay. tenants. And that's, that's the, uh, the Avery? I was going to name it. Audrey. 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 The Audrey. Yeah. I'll, I'll follow up with you and try to get the word out because I don't know. I'd like to know whether that's going to be blocked for the rest of us or not. Okay. Because they said Shay owns that shopping center. They can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will have to follow up because I don't have a good answer to that. I don't want to don't speculate or guess. So I'll follow up. Any other questions? Is there a great Yes, sir. You went, so uh, when you return the debt here in the next month, uh, how are we going to celebrate that? <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, so So I, the finance director has already told me she's buying a big sheet cake. Um, it's going to be like an internal solo. They're really excited about it. Um, they should be. It's, it should be, uh, I mean, everybody's proud of the fact, because you don't hear that very much among the government's retiring all the remaining debt service. Uh, so I don't know, I'll talk to the board of directors, we may have some kind of a community event, I think it's, it's certainly worthy of that. How was it going to impact residents? <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I talked about the double A plus bond rating, right, and that's just kind of an illustration of how wisely we've managed our resources. Is there going to be a direct impact to the residents? Um, likely not, I mean that bond rating is certainly going to become stronger. Now, that's only, to be honest, useful when you're talking about having to borrow money. And, you know, fortunately, we've got such a strong reserve. Uh, many of you have heard kind of the rainy day fund. We've got a very strong reserve. Our policy says 40% uh, of the next year's operating expenses should be held in reserve. We're up close to like 100. But we've got a very strong reserve from accounts built up. So I think that, uh, you know, the likelihood of us in the Near future, having to borrow any funds um, or come to the voters or anything like that is slim to none. So I, I think that uh, you know, there's not going to be a direct, direct impact. I don't think on, on residents are not going to feel that, uh, but it certainly puts the district in a very, very strong position going forward. Just good business, I think, right? Not having debt and overhead. Okay, we should probably wrap that down. Okay, thank you, David, for coming off. <laughs> thank you all for the great questions. Anyway.